fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one the habit that these people have to say. Hello, this is the Lone Ranger speaking. You know Americans have the reputation of being always on the go. You can see how we got that reputation when you think back on the exploits of men like Daniel Boone, Lewis and Clark, Davy Crockett, and many others. They had to cross the rivers, climb the mountains, break the trails from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Today, Americans are still full of energy. And the important thing to remember is that we are a wheat nation. We eat more energy-giving wheat by far than any other grain. It's one big reason why we are still on the move exploring new frontiers. Keep on eating your wheat, and you'll be doing an okay, okay. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hooray! The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, rode the trail through the hills near the town of Caldwell, Texas. Suddenly, they were startled by the sound of a shot. And a voice called out from behind some boulders. Oh, yeah, I'm oh, 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 oh. He'll do as he says until he shows himself. Get up, get up there. Ah, you come right up from boulders. Yeah. Oh, oh, boy. I got you both covered. I figure you two hombres are with the bait, gang. Well, we're not outlaws. The mask says you are, mister. The Lone Ranger glanced quickly at Toto. The Indian understood. Knee signals caused Silver and Scout to move apart quickly. The young man looked from the Lone Ranger to Toto. Wait. In that second, the masked man drew and fired. No. You're not hurt. The bullet hit your gun. Uh, my hand's numb. I... I told you, we're not outlaws. Well, you got the drop on me now. I suppose you... All right, dismount. We'll not hurt you. Ready? But I think an explanation is in order. Easy, said a big fella. He's got the cheap fella. Oh, who are you? I'm Ned Downs. I'm gunning for Jeff Bates. Leader of an outlaw gang. He killed the father, the girl I'm going to marry. We came here to help capture that gang. What? A young fellow like you wouldn't have a chance against them alone. You came here after Bates and his gang? That's right. I don't savvy. Why would a masked man... Him, Lone Ranger. Me, his friend, Tonto. The Lone Ranger? That's right. Gosh, I've heard about you from my dad. He's sheriff in Caldwell. Why don't you work with your father? Well, Dad and the posse haven't had any luck getting evidence against that gang, much less run them down. Oh? You see, I've been away to school, came to town last night. Eh? I stopped first at my girl's house. Judy told me that her father had been killed a week ago by a gang that held him up on the way home from the bank. Killed by Jeff Bates and his men? Well, couldn't be proved, I reckon. He died at home, but whispered the name Bates to Judy before he died. Nobody else heard him, so it's just her word. But I swore to run him down and get the truth. That wouldn't be easy, Ned. Yeah. Anyway, Judy told me last night Dad had gone to Pecos with a prisoner and left his deputy in charge. Deputy and posse haven't done much toward finding that gang. I still think it would be better if you rode with a posse, Ned. No. The deputy, Gil Harris, used to go with Judy before she decided she liked me better. We don't get along. He doesn't even know I'm back. 
Ned, uh, perhaps we could work together against that gang. Oh, all right. Your, your bullet smashed the gun I was holding, but I have another with me. I'm sorry I had to shoot. It's all right. Uh, yesterday, over in Red Rock at the cafe, I was mistaken for an outlaw myself. Oh? What happened? Well, Nombre came up to me and called me Trigger. Asked if I was still playing a lone hand. I told him he'd made a mistake, but he just laughed. Said if I wanted to join with him and some friends to make easy money to come back there this afternoon. Then he left. Hmm. He might have been one of Bates' men. Not right. Well, that thought didn't occur to me. Say, maybe it'd be a good idea for me to go meet him. It's only five miles to Red Rock. If he did take me to Bates, I could get in with the gang and keep in touch with you until I got evidence against him. It's a great risk, Ned. But it might be our chance to get the Bates gang. You might be able to get evidence against them, but well, I It's think... our one chance, mister. And as long as they're convinced I'm an outlaw named Trigger, there wouldn't be much risk. I could find out when they plan to hold up, get word to the posse, then let them move in and catch the gang red-handed. It might work, Ned. I'll go meet that hombre this afternoon and try to join the gang. We'll ride partway with you, set up a camp, and wait for word from you. Not good idea. All right, let's go. Easy, hey, steady. Easy, easy. 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 Later that afternoon, Ned entered the cafe in Red Rock. A man standing at the bar turned and grinned as the young man approached. Well, Tiggy, I thought you might show sure up. I got to thinking over what you said yesterday. Let's sit down where we can talk privately. Yeah. My name's Slim, Tiggy. I told the boss about meeting you. He said if you were interested... That depends on who your boss is. Reckon you've heard of Jeff Bates? Uh, Jeff Bates? Uh, yeah, I, I've heard something about him and his gang. What I heard, he must be smart. The law doesn't have evidence against his gang so far. <laughs> That's right. The sheriff and posse at Caldwell have been hunting this, but even if they found the gang, there's not enough evidence to hold us, huh? Uh, I'm not used to working with a gang. You'd get used to it. You have a reputation as a gunman, Trigger, and we can use one more man. Now, what do you say? Want to meet Jeff Bates and ride with us? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd like meeting him. Good. No use wasting time. We leave right now. Come on. <laughs> Later, at a hideout shack not far from Caldwell, Ned met Jeff Bates and four more of his men. Still mistaken for an outlaw named Trigger, Ned was received without question. Glad to have you with us, Trigger. For a young hombre, you sure made a reputation for yourself in Arizona. Slim recognized you in the cafe. He told me you were in this territory. I still don't remember ever seeing Slim before. You didn't. But I saw your picture on a handbill in Arizona once. <laughs> You joined us at a good time, Trigger. We're planning a job for tomorrow afternoon, robbing the stage from Pecos to Caldwell. We stop it in Boulder Valley. That's right. You ride with us on that job. You take care of the guards. Uh-huh. From then on, you'll be a full member of the gang. That evening, Slim and two of the men left to go to the cafe in Red Rock. Ned played cards for a while with Jeff Bates and the remaining two members of the gang. Then he finally stood up. Uh, I'm tired of playing cards. I think I'll ride the cafe and join Slim and the others for a while. Sure, go ahead. Tell them to get back early. Right. See you all later. A short time later, Ned pulled rain at the Lone Ranger's camp. Oh, oh, oh. Stay there. Well, Ned, we were getting worried. Everything's working out fine, mister. I can't stay long. I have to go on to Red Rock and meet a few of the men. I'm accepted as a member of the gang. Good. They plan to hold up the stage tomorrow afternoon. That'll be the chance to catch them red-handed. I suggest you write a note, Ned, explaining the steps you've taken. 
And tell him what the gang plans to do. Honor will take it to your father's office tonight. All right. We'll follow the stage in tomorrow and be on hand to help capture the gang. I'll write the note now. Then I'll head for Red Rock so the men won't get suspicious. That night, Tottle rode to town and stopped at the sheriff's office. With Ned's note in his hand, he entered. Well, Engine, what brings you here? Uh, me bring note to Sheriff. Well, sheriff Downs is out of town. He expected to be back late today, but got delayed. The note's important. Oh, uh, it's plenty important. It's note from Sam. A note from Ned? Uh. But he's away at school. No, him here now. Uh. You read note. Uh, dear Dad, I arrived last night, but you were out of town. I had a chance to join the Bates gang. They plan to rob the stage tomorrow, and I'll be with them. This is the chance you've waited for to get evidence against them. The holdup will take place at Boulder Valley. Be there with your posse, your son Ned. Ah. So Ned Downs got in with a gang to get evidence, huh? Mm, that's right. Him brave young fella. Well, we'll be there to grab the gang. Like he says, it's the chance we've been waiting for. Mm, that's good. And me go now. Tonto left the office, and the deputy sat a moment in thought. Then he smiled grimly, left the desk, and went to speak to another deputy. Jim, I have news. Yeah? What? I found out the Bates gang is planning to hold up the stage tomorrow at Boulder Valley. Holy mackerel. How'd you find that out? From an engine friend of mine. And what's more, he told me something else that'll surprise everybody in town. Yeah, what? The sheriff's son, Ned, is a member of that gang. Uh, that's impossible. Sheriff's son is at school. No, 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 he isn't. He must have given up school without letting the sheriff know and went to join up with Bates. But if he's caught red-handed with the gang... My duty is to uphold the law, Jim. We'll catch that gang. And if Ned Downs is with him, by thunder, he'll take his medicine along with the rest of them. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Diving Doris is 13, and she is a diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast, and you'll get go power, too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood, and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell-tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue. Gil Harris, the deputy in charge at Caldwell, saw a chance to get even with Ned Downs for winning the favor of the banker's daughter, Judy. The deputy did not tell that the information he had received about the Bates gang had come from Ned. Gil, don't you think you'd better try to get word to Sheriff Downs so he can be here when we go to capture the gang? Can't get word to him in time. Anyway, it's better if he isn't here under the circumstances. It would be bad enough for him to get back and find his son in jail as an outlaw. Hush, the sheriff will take it mighty hard. Maybe. But the law is the law, Jim. If Ned's with that gang, it's our job to capture him. Yeah, I suppose so. Jim, I... I was thinking it'd be better not to mention about Ned to the posse. I'm counting on you to keep your mouth shut. Just as you say, Gil. It'll be a feather in our hat to grab Bates and his men, Jim. I don't want anything to happen to prevent it. If the gang gets word we're wise, they'll leave the stage alone. 
This is our big chance, so word mustn't leak out, Savvy. You can count on me. Good. We'll be ready to jump that gang as soon as it stops the stage. This town is sure in for a big surprise tomorrow. The next day, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, certain that the deputy and the posse would carry through the plan to capture the gang, rode some distance from town to wait for the stage to go by with the intention of following it. Meanwhile, the deputy left half the posse in hiding on one side of the valley and took the rest of the men to the opposite side. He gave them final instructions and added, Men, I want to capture all those outlaws. Don't let any one of them get away. We'll wait and hide and watch. Let them actually hold up the stage and get the cash box. Then we'll move in and catch them dead to rights with the evidence. All right, the stage will be coming soon. The wall here be on your toes. A few miles from town, the stage creaked along the trail. Sheriff Downs sat in the guard's place beside the driver, who was saying, Look, you was taking this trip, Sheriff. The guard took sick just for time to leave Vegas. Glad to take his place, Jake. My horse went lame. I had to leave him behind. Uh I'd rather ride up here than closed up inside that doggone coach. I feel better having you with me. Carrying a lot of bank cash today, and I'd have felt nervous without a guard. Well, we'll soon be in Caldwell safe and sound. Yep. There's Boulder Valley just ahead. Get up there. Come on. Hidden behind big boulders, Bates and his men waited patiently for the stage to enter the valley. You'll be coming along soon, men. Have your guns ready and ride out shooting. Yeah. Well, I reckon you're itching to go into action, eh? Yeah. Well, it won't be long now. You won't be sorry you joined the game. I reckon I won't, Slim. Now listen, all of you. We'll mask our faces with our bandanas and then we... Here comes the stage now. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. Come on. Get, Get up. up. Come on. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, following the stage, rode from cover when they heard the shooting. And a moment later, they saw the gang stop the stage. The masked man watched for the posse to appear according to the plan. Then, when he saw horsemen closing in from either side, he and Tonto urged their horses into a gallop to help capture the outlaws. There were no passengers in the coach, and the stage driver and sheriff were surrounded by outlaws before they had a chance to act. They were quickly disarmed and the cash box taken by the gang. Break open that box, put the money in your saddlebag. Trigger, keep your eye on the sheriff and the driver. As the sheriff and driver sat with raised hands... Sheriff, look, the law! The sheriff turned to the driver and said... Look, a posse coming from both sides to trap the outlaws. Get out, men, and give it to The crooks have their hands full with the posse. Come on, men, get him. Don't let him escape. When the sheriff called out, Jeff, the outlaw leader, turned suddenly to shoot him. But Ned Downs was quicker. No! Hey, Sheriff, that slim young crook shot the gang leader. Yeah, the leader was about to gun me. Ned, masked by the bandana, wasn't recognized by his father. But the sheriff realized the young man had saved his life. Ned saw the Lone Ranger and Tonto riding toward the stage and galloped to join them. The deputy, Gill, also saw the masked man and Indian. He recognized Tonto as the Indian who had brought the note and tried to shoot him. His first bullet went wild, and before he could shoot again, the Lone Ranger opened fire. Hello, that deputy was trying to shoot you. Hit by one of the Lone Ranger's bullets, the deputy fell from the saddle, and the masked man and Indian rode toward him. Near the stage, the outlaws, several of whom were wounded, quickly surrendered. Ned removed his bandana, and as he and the Lone Ranger and Tonto approached the stage, the posse threatened them with guns. Here comes a masked man, an Indian. Cover the men. The sheriff left the stage and stood with drawn gun as the four riders approached. By thunder, that's my son Ned and Deputy Gil Harris with them. Wait there. Tell the men not to shoot. These men are friends. Hold your fire, men. Hold your fire. Hold your fire. Ned, I don't savvy. Sheriff, your son was with the outlaws. The 
deputy found out. By golly, mister, I recognize you and that Indian now. Good. Sheriff, that masked man, he shot me in the shoulder. You were shooting at my Indian friend. I don't savvy this. They're members of the gang, and so is your son, Ned. He was helping in the holdup. Wait a minute, kid. You know better than that. I sent a note to Dad's office last night. Uh Uh-huh. And me take note. Give it to deputy. Him read it, say it good. Ned get evidence against gang. He's lying about a note, Sheriff. I don't tell the truth, Sheriff. Ned did join the gang to get evidence. He was with him when this robbery was planned. He sent a note to your office last night telling about it. Gil, where's that note? I tell you the lion. I'll cover him. Search him, mister. Right. right. Here's a note in his pocket. Right. The sheriff quickly read the note, then spoke angrily. So you wanted me to believe Ned was an outlaw, did you? I reckon he did that because of Judy, Dad. I didn't think he'd pull a trick like that. Tie the crooks, men, and we'll take him to jail. Oh, sure. As Come for on. Gil, I'll figure out what to do with him after we get back to town. Sheriff Downs, you have a very brave son. You have the evidence you need now to hold Bates and his men. I'm sure before long you'll get them to talk and give further evidence against Jeff Bates. I'll get them to talk plenty, mister. I don't know. I'll leave now. We'll see you in town before we leave the territory. Adios, everybody. Goodbye. Adios, Ned. Goodbye and good luck. Come on. Come on. Sheriff, Ned said those two hombres are friends. You took their word against kills. But one of them's wearing a mask. Jim, they are friends. They helped Ned with his plans, and they got him out of a jam. Jeff Bates and his men wouldn't have attempted a robbery if they'd known the masked man and Indian were in the territory. And my former deputy, Gill, wouldn't have tried what he did if he'd known who that Indian was who took him the note. Why? You see, that masked man is none other than the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.